Vessis Massive and Crew. Today I'm gonna take my old Amiga, which has been sitting outside, in an outside cupboard, yeah, since 1990 whatever. I'd say 1996 maybe, till all the, until now. This is absolutely mad people. Yeah, till 1996. I've not switched it on. It's got rust, as you can see inside. It's a right state. Um, I really don't know if this is going to come on, yeah? Uh, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is get the Amiga today, clean it up, as you can see, it's got tons of dust on it, and it has just been outside. It's rusty, uh, it's, it's been in the winter, it's been in the summer, it's been, and uh, I just wanted to see if this thing is going to work. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> So guys, as you can see here, this is the original Brain Amiga. Look, it's so dusty where it's not been used for so long. Uh, possibly get an air duster. Dust it all out. Get the Hoover, clean it all up. Madness, look at it. This is the one we used to use in the Brain. I don't know why I put that sticker there. Because we're doing enough of that. Man, this is the original Brain Amiga. The original 1200. One of the... Amigas, I believe one of the 1200s. So now I've got this one and I've got that one. So technically I could string up two Amigas uh, if I need to load a disc. But I was thinking about emulating the second one because sometimes we used to run two Amigas side by side uh, and they weren't MIDI together. They were literally, we just used to press, I think it was this key and that key and play Optimed. And what the benefit of having two Amigas is that you can have four meg instead of two meg, 2.5 meg or whatever it is and you get more sample time. So this is one of the Retro Amigas, man, and it's been sitting here ever since I took it out of the cupboard, nearly a year as well, in the back, and just doing nothing. And I thought tonight, I've always wanted to do, do a video of, um, you know, getting this out, switching on for the first time, and seeing if it works. Okay, also as well, um, what I've done as well, I've improvised my drum machine uh, because I, I realised that I had an Alesis HR16 but also um, an R8 and a Dr. Rhythm Boss drum machine and it's, to be fair, it's not really worth buying all those drum machines when you've got all these samplers. So I've started to make up kits uh, that are retro drum machines that literally just load into the sampler, stick them on the channel and away you go, problem solved. Um, and that's working quite well at the moment um, in terms of getting back some of the drum sounds because on the Amiga, uh, shout to Extra, Extra Spice Mikey mate, uh, you did ask about the Amiga and those extra MIDI channels. Uh, as you can see, that it's not all four tracks, uh, they're not eight tracks. They're not eight track songs, uh, and as you can see, um, instead of playing just four tracks, um, I've got extra tracks on there and the majority of them are MIDI. So I never really remember compressing down to eight channels. I probably did in a few projects, but uh, I didn't do, I don't do that as far as I remember. Okay, on the next note, uh, I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I want, I found my old, old, old first ever real Amiga. I mean, this one I've got here is not my original Amiga. Yeah, that's one I bought with WH load and all that on there. But I've got my old Amiga and today I found the power supply for it. So what I'm gonna do for the first time in I don't even know how many years, man. 1991, since 1991. Do the math comments down below for me. Um, is uh, is switch it on and see if it comes on, and see what comes on, see if it actually works. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, as you can see, guys, it's as dusty as hell, and um, wow, it's rusty. It needs a Hoover. Floppy drivers inside. Whoa, man, this doesn't look like it's gonna work. Some sort of mount for a hard drive in there. Some rusty as hell components. I don't know if this is gonna work, man, because it's been kind of like in an outside cupboard. So as you can see, guys, it is dusty as anything, man. Look at that. Ribbon cables come out here. That's going to obviously have to go back in. And I'm going to have to grab the Hoover. Look at these chips, man. I wonder if this is going to come on. Let's look. You've got the little IDE bit here where you can put like some sort of IDE drive, I believe. Damn, man, this is crazy. Right, let's get to work. <laughs> Yes, 
stop breaking the box. Pro pool, nothing like that. I just want to keep it literally pretty dry. So now I've got the power supply, and as you can see, this is the old power supply for it. Uh, this is the actual power supply I used to use. So I'm going to plug that in as well, and uh, let's see what happens. Keyboard cable keeps on coming out. Now I don't know if it's typical with these or what. Um, I'm going to try and just wedge that in there for the time being. I don't know if there's a, some sort of clip that's got to go on, but uh, it's not going on, it's not staying on easy. I'm gonna have to do a bit of research into that. But so far, it's looking terrible. <laughs> I was gonna say so far so good, but you've got no chance of it. It's like this just rests on, on there. Weird. Comment down below if you know how to put these in. Maybe there's a video or link or something. I'm just gonna just do that. Now, I want to power it up to see if it comes on. So there you have it. It's not even clean, look at it. Ugh. Anyway, it can get cleaner if it comes on. All the ports are rusty and everything, people. Check this out. Okay, guys, gonna flick that switch now. Three, two, one. Lol. Oh, the lights come on. Oh shoot. Okay, we've got power. Question is, do we have a disc? The power works. Not hearing any activity. Oh wait, I think I heard the disc make a noise there. We've got a disc in. No freaking way. It's reading the disc. But the keyboard, I don't think works. No, no caps lock. Wow. It's trying to boot. Do you know what? It works. After all these years, it works. That's insane. That's what you call a computer that's made to last, man. Lights are coming on and everything. I think I'm going to try and take off this shield in here and see if I can um, connect the keyboard, man. That's crazy. Even though this thing's rusty, man, it's still working. That keyboard is not having it. Yeah, there must be a better way to put this keyboard in. Okay, so I pushed this little white bit down a bit now, and this seems to be sitting a bit, lot more sturdy. Now, let's see if it works. Yes, keyboard on. Holy moly. Right, let's try reset. Wow, man, this is crazy. Okay, so let me just get a program disc. Okay, control, alt, delete, reset. This is working. The, the orange light comes on now, you know it's working. Booting up, yep. It's reading the disk drive. The bloody Amiga's working. Could be the video board gone or something, you don't know, but I've got to screw it all up. Probably put an HXC in there, guys. If you want to see this thing plugged into the screen and see what it comes on like, yeah, in the next video, give me 50 likes. In the next video, I'll plug it all up and I'll see what it's saying.
So guys, that's it for today's video. That's all I've got time for. Don't forget, if you want to see this Amiga actually plugged into a screen to see if it actually comes on, smash that like button. If I get to 50 likes, yeah, I'll string it up proper and we'll have a look at it. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Take care. God bless. Peace.